So what's up everybody, it's your boy, Obadiah, coming at you on the 20th, or what is it, the 14th of October today. So hopefully everybody's having a great day. Uh, I appreciate you watching and I welcome to the channel. I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of what we're doing. Um, basically I'm gonna cover a little bit of information about the Arab-Israeli conflict right now, kind of why it started, who are the actors in it, and where we might be going with it. So uh, for those of you that are interested in this information, uh, go ahead and take a listen and let's do this thing. So I'm gonna answer some questions first off uh, that are frequently asked, especially with regard to this current conflict. Uh, question number one is, who is Hamas? Uh, Hamas, as you probably already have heard, is a terrorist organization, a Palestinian terrorist organization that runs the country of Gaza. Uh, this group was founded in 1997 <clears throat> in a period of time called the First Intifada. The First Intifada, or the word Intifada, simply means a uh, Palestinian uprising against Jewish occupation. So Hamas has controlled the Gaza Strip since 2006, where they had legislative elections that actually elected Hamas as the rulers of Gaza. And I'm sure that those elections were just completely fair and square, right? So um, <clears throat> they control the Gaza Strip and they've had it for, like I said, almost 20 years now. So that's part of why this conflict is occurring. So asking that question leads to asking a second question which would be, why have these two groups been fighting each other for well over a thousand, two thousand years? Why, why is this the case? So this, this Palestinian-Israeli conflict has got really deep religious roots, um, and it stretches all the way back to the time of Moses and David and Joshua. Um, Israelis and Palestinians both have historical and religious ties to the region, okay? Um, and that leads to some national narratives that kind of you know, work against each other in relation to Hamas and Israel. Um, usually it's over land most of the time, okay? Um, and they fight over territory because the Palestinians believe that it is their territory and the Jews believe that it is their territory given to them by God <clears throat> uh, over 3,000 years ago. So that's kind of also why they've been fighting for such a long period of time. The second question of why did the or third question rather of why did this current conflict actually occur? Why is it happening right now? Um, it stems from, like I said a minute ago, long-standing issues over things like territory, refugees, and the state of Jerusalem. That's a very big one. Okay. Um, others that are more immediately triggering to people in the area are things like evictions of Palestinians, um, religious tensions in Jerusalem, uh, things like that. So these really start to anger them. Uh, and then they take action by launching rockets into Israel. You know, they get upset and they claim that they're the victims and they say we need to resist the occupation. And that means launching rockets into the other country. Uh, and in this case, um, actually streaming over the border on foot, breaking down border and coming into towns, killing people, massacring civilians. Uh, these are all war crimes, obviously, you know, so. That's kind of the nature of this current conflict at the moment. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. But before we talk about some stuff like that, I need to give you some history so you can understand the orientation of this entire issue. So we need to include the British, okay? So thinking about the British, um, we gotta go back to the early 20th century. That's between 1900 and about 1917, okay? So around this time, World War I had popped off. Uh, and after it ended, there was a group called the League of Nations. This League of Nations is kind of similar to our United Nations today. Um, and it gave Britain what's called a mandate, okay? And for those of you that don't know what a mandate is, <clears throat> it just basically means that they are telling you this is something you have to do, that you need to do, and there's pressure to do it, okay? Um, for example, if a president of America wins an election in like all 50 states, and all 50 of those states voted for him because they wanted him to, you know, uh, let's say outlaw murder or something in a certain way, like, or I'm sorry, to legalize murder in a certain way, um, they would say you have a mandate to do that because you have so much support, all right? So the mandate in terms of uh, England or Great Britain, I should say, uh, was that they would come in and they would create essentially a whole, an area for Jews and Palestinians uh, to live peacefully among one another. A few years later, in 1917, uh, they had what's called the Balfour Declaration, the Balfour, B-A-L-F-O-U-R Declaration, and that was in 1917. This document basically expressed public support from the British uh, to establish a national home for the Jewish people. 
And the reason they needed to establish a home for the Jewish people is because there are, or there were up to this point, no Jewish countries. Okay, Jews at this point had been scattered around the world, uh, mostly like Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, North Africa specifically. <clears throat> and that's why they needed to establish a place where Jews can call their own. Jews can call it their home, you know. Uh, and this also stretches back to some biblical issues where God promised them the promised land, uh, which is exactly where they are today. <clears throat> so they also have that religious connection to the land uh, along with their nationalistic connection to the land. So then the fourth question would have to be, what is the state of Israel? Like, what does this mean? Okay. Uh, so Israel is a democratic country. That means that they have ruled by the people and representatives of the people. Uh, and they're the only do uh, democratic society in the Middle East. Okay, All the other societies in the Middle East are uh, regular, non-democratic. Okay, um, So Israel does have a strong majority of uh, Jews that live in Israel, but there are also Arabs uh, and Christians and uh, Palestinians as well. So now that we've covered that, uh, one of the next things that I'd like to cover with you is the question of who are Palestinians and what does it mean uh, to say Palestine? So the Palestinian uh, identity, their national identity, is a very young one. Okay, It was uh, first brought about in the 20th century is when it emerged, uh, and it was in response to political and social change that was happening at the time in the area. Okay. So Palestinians can be, they say, can be Muslim, Christian, uh, or other religions, and that they share a common history, a common culture, and they share a desire for self-governance and self-determination, okay, which constitutes a distinct national identity. Here's the problem, okay, and I'm speaking as a qualified palmologist in this area, a war historian, okay. When it comes right down to it, the word Palestinian or Palestine is a simple corruption of the ancient word Philistine or Philistia. <clears throat> the Philistines were a uh, group of Semitic peoples that lived in modern day Jordan, uh, Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, parts of Egypt. These people um, are talked about in the Bible. David from David and Goliath killed a giant and Goliath was one of these people. Uh, G Goliath was a Philistine, okay? That word Philistine came down through time, all right? Now, the, Philist or the, the Palestinians today, they claim to be extended relatives of the Philistines, okay? Because that word sounds so similar, all right? Now, but there's a very big issue here. Philistines 2,000, 3,000 years ago uh, weren't Muslim, okay? There were, no Mos there were no Arabic Muslims that existed during this time. The Muslims wouldn't show up until the, the 7th century AD, specifically like 600 AD. Okay, so we're talking thousands of years difference here, all right? Uh, so the Palestinians, and I'm telling you this unequivocally, you heard it here first, there is no such thing as a Palestinian. There is no such thing as a Palestinian state or Palestine, okay? These places do not exist, and these people are figments of their own imagination. And it's because they don't want to face the harsh reality, okay? Here's another point. If these people are Arab Muslims, which they admit to being, okay, and they admit that their ancestors were not these things, <clears throat> so there goes the whole national identity thing, they're admitting that they're Muslim, okay, and that they're Arab Muslim. If that's the case, then they really have no claim to Jerusalem or to the areas around it. One, because they were here after the Jewish people, okay, and uh, after Christians as well. Uh, and the second reason is because these folks are in, how do I say this to you properly? So the Palestinians are directly uh, contradictory to their own selves, okay? But the bigger issue is since they're Arabs, you have to ask the question, why don't they just go to an Arab country around this spot, all right? There's like two dozen Arab countries in the regional area around Israel that all these Muslims can go live in. Why do they want to go to Israel? Well, I can answer that for you. It's because Israel is the only democratic place in the entire Middle East. Remember I said that earlier. They are what we call a bastion of liberal freedom and democracy. They're industrialized. Uh, they are good people. They're civilized, you know, um, and they fight all the time just to keep their existence going. All right, so that's kind of where this is coming from in that regard. So 
again for coverage the palestinians are arab they're not palestinian okay there's no such thing as a palestinian because those are philistines the philistines were wiped out okay, they are no longer anymore there's no more philistines so therefore there is no palestinian and second off these people are arab muslims the, Palest uh, the philistines were not okay they were polytheistic so they were nothing like us so you can't claim historical heritage or religious heritage when it doesn't connect the dots. This is the same case with uh, like Southern Baptists and the book The Trail of Blood. It's the same exact thing, okay? There's just bad information. So we're going to continue on to the next point, but I wanted to make sure you guys were clear on a couple of those things. So oftentimes you'll hear uh, Palestinians say that Israel is an occupying force or in the occupied territories uh, the Palestinians have to live. Uh, so they consider Israel, why is this? They consider Israel a occupying force because of their Israeli's military presence <clears throat> in the West Bank, uh, in East Jerusalem, and in the Gaza Strip, okay? Uh, but to update you on this, the, Israel, the Israeli army, the IDF, pulled out of Gaza in 2006, 2007, after Hamas won their elections there. So they're trying to be fair and let everybody do what they needed to do, govern themselves. That wouldn't work because Iran kept funding them, Hezbollah comes in and helps, and it creates a whole quagmire of terrorism, okay? Gaza is a breeding ground for terrorism. So, they believe that Israel is occupying space that they uh, own, and they're going to do everything they can to resist this occupation, because they're seeing it as a state of war, you know, and for them, it's legitimate. So that's why you see things on TV right now with Palestinians, so-called Palestinians in America, and in other places, giving support to Hamas, up there yelling and shouting that Hamas is not the enemy and that they're not terrorists. We literally just watched these people violate like a hundred rules of warfare in a matter of two days. When they came over and destroyed the lives of civilians, what we call soft targets, non-military targets, you broke international law. And so at that point, we have, right there, we have an issue. All right, but having said all that, they continued further and continued to go kill Israelis, 1,200 eventually. All right, that's a massive attack. That's proportionately, that's America's 9-11, and this is Israel's 9-11. That's what I mean to say, okay? So this is a big deal for them, you know? Uh, so they also argue sometimes about the Israeli settlements uh, and land seizures and things like that and restrictions on movement that sometimes happen. Um, and the Palestinians call this a violation under international law. It is not a violation under international law. They have created the conditions in which they live, not the Israelis. The last question typically that um, should be asked here is, since there was no Jewish homeland for Israel before 1948, where were they in the world? Like, where did they exist? Okay. Um, they lived in various parts of the world, and mostly Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. Uh, but during the 19th and 20th centuries, like I said, there was a very significant Zionist movement. Zionism basically advocated for the establishment of a Jewish homeland in what they call Palestine, okay? Uh, and that was because of historical and religious ties. So for review very quickly, we can say that Hamas is a terrorist organization. We can say that the conflict erupted out of long-standing tensions and territory and refugees and status of Jerusalem, things like that. Uh, we can say that the British in 1917 created the Balfour Declaration, which supported an, an establishment of a home for the Jews, Jewish people. Um, and uh, don't forget that after World War I, there was the League of Nations who gave Britain the power to do this. Okay, So when those Jews were gone during that time, uh, and then they go to return in the modern day to the Palestinians. It seems like, no, you were, you've already gone away. You cannot come back. Okay, so that's part of why the conflict erupted. Um, and that was the role that the, that the British played. We went over that. Um, the state of Israel, we can say the state of Israel is a democratic and open society within the Middle East. And it's the only one that is characterized as such. And she was founded in 1948. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, America was the first country to recognize Israel. It was either 11 minutes or 14 minutes after she was established so that we can be her absolute ally. Um, we know now why they've been fighting for millennia. It's because of, like I mentioned earlier, there's very historical, religious, and nationalistic ties to the area for both Palestinians and Jews. Uh, and so there's a lot to claim between two different groups that are laying the claim on the same thing. 
So that's kind of why the conflict has erupted and continued to go on over millennia because there, there's no solution at this point. Um, so the next one is why do Palestinians consider themselves, why do they identify as Palestinians when they're Arab Muslims? And this was a big kicker. It's only because their identity is established within the 20th century and the fact that they are not sharing a common culture, heritage, or self-determination with the Philistines, their ancestors, uh, this demonstrates that they are not Palestinians. And there is, again, no such thing as a Palestinian. You're either an Arab Muslim, or you're a Arab Christian, or you're an Arab whatever, okay? Or you're Jewish in that area. But you are not a Palestinian. They're, these people are no more, okay? So we need to get away from that. And the Palestinians believe that Israel is an occupying force because, like I said a minute ago, once Israel left under the uh, during the time of like World War II in these areas before 1948, and then when they came back and started to come into the country again and create the state of Israel, this is what created a lot of that conflict between Palestinians and Israelis. So that's why Palestinians call them occupiers because in their eyes. Israel has returned to a land that doesn't belong to Israel because these people, the Palestinians, have been living on it for 50, 60 years in the absence of the Jews, you see. But now that the Jews have come back to return and uh, restore their homeland, there has to be fighting because the people that are there are either going to assimilate or they're going to be conquered and shipped away. And then, of course, that kind of alludes to the very last thing that we just talked about, which is the uh, Zionist movement You know, in the early 20th century. So the Jews had been scattered about through Europe and North Africa and places like that. And then they came back starting in 1948. So this was from a uh, significant movement called the Zionist movement, which, like I said earlier, makes uh, the claim that or makes the argument that Israelis should come back and have their homeland. And I do agree with this to a certain extent because there's only one Jewish state in the entire world, and that's Israel. You know, every other group, every other culture, every other nationality, they have their spaces in one way or another. Israel is the only place that Jews can go and they can be welcomed and be free, you know, being the people that they are, which we cannot forget are God's chosen people. All right, I'm going to finish off a little bit here with just a little bit of dating for you so you guys can get things wrapped up properly in your head and then you can do more research on your own or you can contact me for other research. <clears throat> Basically, um, I'm going to show you about 3,000 years ago or 3,000 BCE, I should say, so about 4,000 to 5,000 years ago was the time of Moses, uh, and that was whenever they started to move in toward the Holy Land. Then you got to skip all the way forward to the 7th century AD, so that's the 600s AD. All right, so we're looking at like 3,500 years or 2,500 years, give or take, uh, and that was when the Muslims showed up. All right, so you have that gap in timing right there, and that kind of um, shows you exactly when this kind of went down. And then you move forward into 1917 with the Balfour Declaration. 1948, Israel was founded. They fought the Yom Kippur War in 1973, the Six-Day War in 1967, where they fought all five of their Arab neighbors and beat them. Uh, and then they fought in uh, different conflicts throughout the, uh, throughout the age. And now today, we're at the Gaza conflict. So if you guys have any other questions for me, I hope that this has been at least informative for you. Um, I know it's not the most entertaining thing in the world, but it is very necessary for us Obadiahs Pray for each other, pray for the Jews, pray for Jerusalem. This is what we do. I love you guys. Stay blessed, stay highly favored. And this is your boy Obadiah. Peace.